You usually miss out on respect if you try to be someone you're not. Instead of doing that activity, I do the exact same activity, but I place a microphone, an audio recorder in front of them so that every product that they make really has a purpose. The class is about the students learning new skills. Hi everyone! I'm in a different place today because I'm still at my parents' house. Uh, this is their living room and it's a lot nicer to film than my bedroom, which is kind of dark. But today I'm here to tell you guys some tips that I have for being a teaching assistant or TA at universities in the US, which is a common thing to do when you're a grad student and you get a graduate assistantship so that you don't have to pay for your grad school. They often make you work 20 hours, which is usually a teaching assignment. So I'm going to give you guys some tips in case it's you who has to teach for the first time or for the first time in a while or something like that in your university's undergrad program. So let's get started right away. I have I have five tips for you guys today for how to be a good TA or what to consider when you start being a TA. And after I'm done telling you guys all the tips, maybe you can tell me in the comments what your situation is like, if you have any more tips, if you have any more questions, or yeah, if you just want to say hi. So let's start with tip number one. When you start being a TA, for the first time, I think one of the most common worries is that your students, which are not a lot younger than you because they're undergrads, maybe you just finished your undergrad and you know, some undergrads can even be older than just straight out of high school. So you end up with students who are your age or even older than you. So how do you present yourself as their instructor? their teacher if you don't even really feel like a teacher yet. The only thing I can say about this, and I think this is super important, is don't try to be a 50 year old professor. Don't try to be a super strict person if you're not. Don't try to be anyone that's not you. Just try to be yourself and your students are gonna like you for who you are. I think you usually miss out on respect if you try to be someone you're not because your students will be able to tell you can actually convey that kind of role that you're trying to play. So you can just be yourself. Try to be the younger professor. Students like when they have someone that feels like they can, they can identify with them a little bit more. You're the one who's closer to being a student, so you know the student's struggles. You're the one who's closer to being, you know, to living the same lives as them. So you, you know what it's like. You can talk about the same things. You can connect on very different ways. And that doesn't have to mean that you're less strict or that you're not gonna be teaching them as much. But yeah, if you're just yourself, I think your students will appreciate it. And if you're still worried about not making your students feel like you know, you know your subject matter enough because you're being maybe more approachable, younger, behaving more young, then listen for tip number two. Tip number two is to just keep reminding yourself that you're there for a reason. If you're worried that you don't know what you're talking about or that your students are gonna think you don't know what you're talking about because you're young or because you're only just starting out because you don't have your PhD yet, you don't have your degree yet, it doesn't matter. You're there for a reason. You know more than the undergrads do and that's why you're teaching the class. Whoever hired you knew what you know and knows that you're able to teach the class. So don't worry about that. Just keep telling yourself or keep reminding yourself that you know more than them and that you are there for a reason. I think in all my teaching evaluations, there has never been a time where a student said that I don't know what I'm talking about or that I don't know the subject matter that I'm teaching, even though actually some of the classes that I've taught, I did not know anything about. But as a grad student, you have the skill to learn the things just with the amount of background knowledge you have and with the amount of skills that you have um, to learn them right before you teach them to your undergrads. So don't worry, even if it's a class that isn't really in your research interest or in the field of research you usually do, if someone made you teach the class, you'll be fine. And students don't usually assume that you don't know what you're talking about. Be approachable, which was tip number one, and remember that you're there for a reason and that you can be helpful to your undergrads because what you know is what you can teach them. And that's enough for the class that you're teaching. And then 
Going to tip number three. This one is also really important and maybe it can help with the first two too. Your class is about your students, it's not about you. You don't have to show off what you know, you don't have to lecture and lecture and lecture trying to make you sound smart. The class is about the students learning new skills, so make your class about them. See it as a tutoring more than a lecture. You can have lots of activities. You can ask your students what program they're in, what degree they're in, what, what career goals they have, what they're interested in, what they wanna do after graduating, what other classes they're taking, all of those things. And you can tie everything that you're teaching them into that. When you have them do activities, you can have them practice exactly what you think they're lacking. You'll figure that out throughout the semester and by telling them that you're doing that, they'll notice it's not about you, it's about them and they'll feel important in your class, which is exactly what you want. And that's how you help them build skills. They don't really build skills by just listening to you, telling them everything you know. And with that, you also get to avoid having to lecture about something that maybe you don't feel super comfortable about, even though you probably are very able to lecture about it. But if you don't feel like it, that's fine because it's not about lecturing anyway. And then I have two more tips, but these are mostly for the types of classes that I'm teaching and I'm a PhD student in second language studies at the University of Hawaii at Manoa. So my classes in second language studies in the second language studies undergrad program are very discussion based. They're full classes. They're not like a lab that belongs to a lecture or anything. They're just a class in itself. And I do get lots of freedom in how I organize the class or how I do the class as long as I stick to you know the schedule and the materials that were provided. So if your class is in any way like this, don't click away and listen to the last two um, tips. Okay, tip number four is actually very similar to tip number three, but if you're in a class like mine, maybe you have more possibilities to actually do this. If you're allowed to have your class be discussion-based, you should definitely do that. And I don't mean only having your students read something at home and then having them discuss it in class. I mean, they can work on the text that they're reading in class. They can work on writing something in class. They can work on making posters in class. See it as, as I said, see it as a tutoring and see it as you're the tutor for every single student in the class. That's how you can make it individualized. That's how you can differentiate between different skill levels and that's how you can make the class about the students by letting each student learn the same skills at their own speed. So what I do for example is I have my students write something every single week. We write like an application or an analysis of a text that we read one day a week. We write about it the second day of the week every single time in class and I have them publish it in some kind of newsletter that we send out to the department. That's just to make sure that they actually do it and not just write something with chat GPT because we all know how embarrassing it looks if you just come up with two paragraphs written by chat GPT because they're not high quality. So yeah, I just have them do that in class and I let them ask questions, I look over it, I look over what they're doing, I give them individualized feedback and if they didn't read the text at home, that's fine because they can do it in class. If they tried to read the text at home but got lost in the first paragraph because that's what happens a lot, I can be there and help them. And their group mates can be there and help them because the students that you're getting are not able to do college type of work by themselves or not all of them. So if you want to make the class about your students, that's where you got to go and start helping them. And yeah, with that, if you structure a class like that, and I don't just have them write in class. They also have them, as I said, make posters in class, make projects in class. Yeah, do little reading activities in class if I know that their strong suit isn't really reading. I start out with reading activities. If I know that debating isn't their strong suit, I'm gonna have them discuss in class and I record it and I upload it. Well, just 
class-wide, but I make it a little podcast so that every product that they make really has a purpose. And during all of this product work, I get to work with them. I get to address everyone's individual problems. I get them to practice skills, practice over and over again. And that way I can shift the focus to the students. I can shift the focus to them doing work, to them learning. And the focus is off of me because I'm not the most important person in the room. They are, the students are. Doing that, my first tip that I had, be approachable or be yourself, depending on who you are. Maybe being closer to their age than to other professors' ages. I feel like they accept me more as a helper that they can work together with, that they can ask for help during those projects or products that they're working on. And I feel like I don't have to do long lectures where I have to prove that I know what I'm talking about, which is also really nice. So you can see how everything kind of fits together. And yeah, let's do number five, the last, last tip that I have for you. And this is honestly also one of the most important tips. I was just saying that I have them do lots of activities, lots of projects, lots of products that they work on in class. Still, every single task that I give my students, I want to be meaningful. I don't have them do any busy work, at least I don't consider it busy work. Whereas I think if if you have your students respond to, you know, usually in some online classes or in some classes, there's forum posts about a rating and then every student has to write one and respond to other students. And usually the students didn't really read the text. And honestly, sometimes they try to, but can't because it's just too difficult or they don't have the background knowledge for it. But yeah, let's say they didn't read the text for whatever reason, they just try to write something that someone else also wrote, paraphrase it, and then the responses are, yep, I think so too. And then maybe they add one sentence about their opinion and they do that twice. And that just takes lots of time from them. And I don't know if they really learn much from that because you can do it in whichever quality you want. And usually students don't really have the time to actually dive into the text and read all of it and form their own opinion of it. And probably they're also just not able to, um, especially in the younger grades. So that just ends up being busy work while meaningful work would be something like having them figure out what's the main message of the text together in a group, having them highlight what are the most important parts of the text. I do this activity in the beginning of the semester usually where they cut out the most important parts of the text, highlight them, put them onto a poster, and then they present the poster that is just, you know, the main messages of a text to another group. So with that, they actually just did some reading practice. They think they just made a poster to present their text to everyone else, but it's scaffolded or yeah, broken up into little steps that they are able to do. And you as the teacher are there to help them if they get stuck in any phase. If you have them do it at home, they don't have anyone to ask and they just give up usually. They still have to do it, so they end up wasting their time. You end up wasting your time having to grade everything. And yeah, the work is not as meaningful because there's no real purpose. They don't get to show off anything. They don't get to, yeah, produce anything. They just do it because it's part of their grade. Another meaningful task that I do. I was talking about the podcasts earlier. Instead of having my students discuss a text, once we're further ahead in the class and I know they're able to read a text, get the main message, and then I want them to discuss um, the views among others or with their peers. I don't have them only discuss that because I know when I walk around among little group tables, I know I catch them talking about what they do after class, where they're going to get their lunch, what's for homework, which other classes they're taking. We're all wasting our time because they don't have to be there in class for it. So instead, instead of doing that activity, I do the exact same activity but I place a microphone or a recorder, an audio recorder in front of them. And I say, pick a podcast name, pick a podcast host and talk about what you're doing or talk about the discussion question that I gave you, but record it. And then I make them little thumbnails for their podcast and all of a sudden it's recorded. So they have to talk about it. And then they do get into the topic and they enjoy talking about it. And maybe, I don't know if anyone actually ever listens to it, but they know that it's there. They know that they produced 
same thing. So yeah, that's just more meaningful work than having it be a simple class discussion. And yeah, I think those were the five tips that I had for you guys. I'm sorry, it got rambly a little bit. Let me know if I need to clarify anything in the comments. I'm very happy to, or let me know if you want me to go more into detail for any of those five tips that I had. I'm very happy to make another video too. And yeah, just let me know if you have any questions. If you got anything out of this video, please, please consider liking the video or even subscribing to our channel because we have lots of videos like this. We're both PhD students at the University of Hawaii at Manoa and we would love to have you as a subscriber and seeing you again. Thank you guys so much for watching.